Yes? Now, uh, what was it like filming the flying scene at Christopher Reeve? It was incredibly painful filming the flying scenes with Christopher Reeve. I mean, physically really excruciating. One of the ways that we flew was on the end of a fiberglass body bowl that was sticking up from way, way up there. We were strapped in and you'd lumber up and flap yourself into your body bowl and then a crew of people would come over on a ladder and put the clothes on over the body bowl and then Chris would get in there and you had no wiggle room. And Chris and I, as I mentioned, we were great friends who bickered from time to time and we'd be strapped there beside each other. There was no escape. And I used to smart ass with the crew all the time. So Donner wanted me to focus on Chris, so he'd send a bunch of people over there to take out my contact lenses. Now I'm blind as a bat without my glasses and contact. So I was stuck with Chris. And then I kept books down the front of my costume, which I agreed, and he was very scornful of that. <laughs> Don't you stay in character. And I go, well, we've been doing this for a year, and all we do is look left like a gambler for not <laughs> And there, there was a lot of that went on. But it was physically really horrible. I mean, you just couldn't move. And then when we hung from the wires and went on great trolleys across the ceiling, these leather harnesses would cut into you. And oh God, after 14 hours of that. And also getting down to the bathroom was such a big production. And it took about an hour of time. So movies are all about saving money through saving time. So there would be lots of, well, can you hold it, Margo? Can you hold it for another, uh, and you go, oh, okay. And you finally get released and race to the bathroom. You know, it's, there was a lot of stuff about it that was really painful. Really painful. Yeah. And then Chris had a, um, on, the, on the balcony scene, I, maybe some have heard the story, I think it's on the DVD. We had these guys who worked these big circles and they'd shoot us off the balcony and we were supposed to fly off in the distance. But Chris's guy it was a guy named Derek and Derek was drunk a lot. So Chris, Chris would end up in the bushes or he'd slam into the wall or he'd me out and whack back into me and I'd go sideways into the planter. And it was, uh, it was, it was something trying to get those lines scenes. It was the opposite of romantic. And I never thought it would work. I really didn't. Any other questions? Oh. Well, how would you compare America to New Zealand? Wow. <laughs> well, New Zealand is a lot saner than America, but New Zealand's a lot smaller, so it doesn't have the opportunities for insanity that America has. New Zealand is one of my favorite countries in the world and has been since I first came here in, whoa, 1988. So that's 30 years ago. Um, and I just fell in love with New Zealand. I fell in love with the Kiwis. I fell in love with all of it and have been back a couple of times. Um, it, it has a different heritage. It's Maori, British, pretty much, or was exclusively until what, the 30s or 40s when did other people start coming in. Um, the United States was born out of uh, racial violence, uh, first against the Native Americans and then against blacks. Um, it's, 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 much, it's much more uneasy with itself and it has a lot more violence and contradictions, and it has larger clumps of wildly uneducated people, such as the sort of people who think Sarah Palin is the second coming. Uh, <laughs> that's an opinion. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know her accent, everybody goes, what's her accent? It's really Canadian. And you just have to walk through jaw and not move it at all, like you're really old. And you talk like that, and you go, oh, okie dokie. <laughs> and, uh, geez. And, and, uh, so she really has a Canadian accent. No, she doesn't know that. <laughs> um, she's, uh, I don't think New Zealand could produce a leader like Sarah Palin. That would be a big difference. I could be wrong, however. I could be wrong. You know, there's a sort of percentage of nuts in every society, <laughs> and I'm sure you guys have your share of yours. They seem to, they're just a, they're, it's a clump of any society. 
Um, but it's a lot calmer in New Zealand. It's a lot more wholesome. It's a lot more like Canada, actually. <laughs> and I think Australia is probably more like the States. Nice. Yes. Who is the guy who owns Niagara Falls, Canada or America? Big pardon? Who owns the uh, Who owns Niagara Falls? Yeah. Well, one part of it is owned by Canada, the big glorious falls. And then this yeah. small little falls actually is the American side, which is kind of interesting. But they, it, it, the border goes right through it. Yeah. It's a very tacky town. It's full of nothing but little souvenir shops with, you know, plastic versions of Niagara Falls. But the falls itself are gorgeous, really gorgeous. I love the States for a lot of things. I love it for the forthrightness of the people, for the not aggressive but um, kind of can-do, stand up for yourself, say what you mean attitude, which sometimes when I go home to Canada, I find that too much politeness is a bit aggressive. <coughs> Um, and then the other half to go, well, that politeness is kind of nice other times. It's a dichotomy. I feel that I am both, and now legally I am both, because I really, about, God, it was only two and a half years ago, decided to take out American citizenship because my loathing of Bush was so extreme. I thought my one vote, if my little vote can punish anyone who supported him, I'm going to get to citizenship. <laughs> Oh, I do acting work. Um, uh, I get little, I live in this little town, as I said, in Montana, and I won't live in Hollywood, so my agent just goes, well, how, what am I supposed to do? And I say, well, I don't know, something comes along. Let's do it, and for the most part. Um, I just did two uh, shows back to that. There's a gay network in the States called Here, and I'm big with lesbians. I'm not gay, but lesbians love me. And, uh, <laughs> and so, it, well, I've got my charm. <laughs> and, and, and I got to play the butch half of the lesbian couple in this uh, mystery movie for this gay network. And um, the, my daughter had been saying for years, Mommy, you dress like a lesbian. Can't you get any clothes ever? Well, here, here I am. And, uh, and, and I said, I, so anyway, they came to do wardrobe. We filmed in Vancouver and the clothes didn't fit, so I ended up using my own clothes. And then <laughs> my daughter would see. And then, <laughs> And then I kept saying to the director, uh, am I butch enough? And he went, oh, you're butch enough. <laughs> oh, so it was actually really interesting to discover that with the exception of the actual sexuality of Robert Amelie. Um, I was so bad with men all my life, I, I assumed I had to be gay. And then my a dear gay friend, a guy, said, well, who do you fall in love with, men or women? And I went, man. And he went, well, then you're not gay. <laughs> So it, it, it was. So I've done a couple of movies for them actually. It's really fun because if you're a lady of a certain age and you're surrounded by the most lovely queens, you're treated like a princess. Let me tell you. And having gone crazy in public just gives, puts me right up there with Liza. Um, <laughs> so I have a I have a wonderful and much loved gay following who I just treasure and adore, and and they've given me a lot of work actually over the last while, and it's. It's uh, it's something terrific. I don't mean to be making fun at all of gays. I, I, I don't feel that way. 